Hey everyone. Okay, so I've tried to film this a few times before and I've learned that uh, I really need to split this into two videos because of how long I'm talking. So uh, what this is, is it's going to be a TBR video, but it's not going to be an August TBR. It's going to be a the next few months TBR because I have so many things that I want to read right now and I really, I'm in so many different conflicting reading moods that I can't decide what to read when. So I'm just randomly picking things up from this pile. Um, so yeah, because of that, this is gonna be a within the next few months uh, TBR. Um, hopefully a lot of these I'll be able to finish uh, by the end of September because several of them are very short and some of them I'm already almost finished with and things like that. Uh, and there's only a couple really big books in this pile, so hopefully I can finish a lot of these before the end of September, but some of these will probably spill into October. Okay, so um, I don't really know how to go about this because I do want to make it two parts, but I don't know which sections to put in what. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think I'll start with the books that I'm currently reading. Um, so... First, we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I am about halfway through this, and it's the first time that I've reread it since uh, 2011 when part two of the film came out. Um, I think before this, I had read this about three times. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm really loving reading this again, um, especially because there are so many things that I forget aren't in the film or uh, that they change in the film and I just love the book so much more and I still really like the film like those two films together part one and part two of uh, Deathly Hollows, are probably my third favorite of the films I think my first two are definitely Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets but it's because those four films of the eight I think are the ones that stick closest to the books um, but there are a lot of things from this that I really love that just they couldn't put in the film. So loving this. Um, and also I'm kind of hoping maybe once I'm finished with that, uh, at some point to read Deathly Hollows Lectures by John Granger, as well as Harry a History by Melissa Anelli, because I have both of those on my shelves at home. And I was specifically waiting until I was finished with my current reread to read those. Um, and some others are uh, Something Fresh by P.G. Woodhouse, which this is the first of the Blanding series, and I'm about 60-something pages into this and really, really enjoying it. And then Moreland Cottage by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm about halfway through this one, which is also 60-something pages because this is only about 130-something pages, um, and I'm really, really loving this. Um, and it just makes me realize how much I love Elizabeth Gaskell's writing and that I really think she is going to end up being my second favorite um, author, either tied with Austen or booting Austen to third. I haven't decided yet, but yeah, I, I love her writing. And then we have Henry IV Part One. Uh, this one I keep having to start over, and what I need to do is start it over and just sit down and listen to the whole thing without doing um without doing chores or anything else to distract me because for some reason this is the first Shakespeare play that I'm having a really hard time understanding as far as the politics and what's going on um and I think maybe part of that is to do with doing other things while I'm listening and then the other part is that it's a two-part play so I think somehow that gets confusing as well I don't know but anyway so yeah, I need to start this over. Um, and then we have some Jeeves books that are also by P.G. Woodhouse. Um, these two. So here's the confusing thing. Uh, Inimitable Jeeves, which is contained in the spine up, is actually um, the first Jeeves short story collection. However, the story in Carry On Jeeves, which is the second collection, uh, the first story in this one is actually a flashback story to when Jeeves first started working for Bertie Wooster. Um, so what I've done is I've read uh, this first one uh, that's in here, Jeeves Takes Charge, 
And I'm now going to go back and start reading Inimitable Jeeves, which has like eight or nine more short stories, um, and read those and then go back to Carry On Jeeves. So yeah, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but it's a little weird. So I'm trying to read one of these a day. Uh, so since there's just eight or nine of these, I'll definitely finish this within the month. And then I want to start this uh, before the end of the month as well. Try to read one every day. Um, and then I'm also reading Life, the Universe, and Everything by Douglas Adams. But I'm probably going to start this over again. Um, because what happened is I started it like two or three months ago read half of it in a day and then the next day I felt like reading something completely different and I just never picked this back up um which you know that's a shame because I feel like this is something you really want to pay attention to because of how funny it is so I'm just gonna start it over and hopefully finish it in like a day because I really do love the Hitchhiker's books um and then what else um Oh, okay. There's a couple more um, that I'm currently reading. One is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. I'm about a third of the way through this, um, and I'm hoping to finish it sometime this week because uh, Katie from Books and Things finished this like a month ago when we were supposed to be reading it together, and um, like that's when we were supposed to be reading it together was that long ago, and I was only on like chapter three when she finished. Um, because I was being very slow about it. Uh, so she's been very patient waiting for me to finish this book so we can talk about it. So I really want to finish it this week. And then, um, oh, okay. This one, I'm sort of already started this one. I basically read a lot of it, like a third of it, like months ago, and then I started it over. Um, so now I'm only on page eight, but I really want to finish this this month because it's due back on the 24th. Oh, and it's Walking Home by Simon Armitage. Uh, next, I'll do my kind of uh, young adult books. Um, young adult and children's. And did one of the books? Yeah. One of them. Here. Sorry, the books fell, so they fell under the bed. Um, first, I'll start with my two children's books that I want to read. Um, the first is Anne of Windy Poplars which is the fourth book in the Anne of Green Gables series. Um, I really want to read this with Ange from Beyond the Pages and Yamini from The Skeptical Reader because they have started um, reading the Ellen Montgomery books um, where they're reading one every month and they started with the Anne series. And so this month I think is the month they're supposed to be reading it, but I don't know when, so I'll have to like try to ask Ange about that to see if I can read it with them. Um, and if not, I'll just read it on my own, but I am loving this series, like, a lot, so, yeah. Um, and then I have The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. I really loved this movie when it came out. Um, it came out in 2008, um, as a, uh, I don't know what you call it, not a, it's animated, but it's animated the way Shrek is animated, not, like, 2D. Um, so anyway, uh, I really loved it, and um, it actually starred Emma Watson as Princess P. Um, so right after I saw the film, I went out and got the book, and I still haven't read it. And I don't know, it just, for some reason, I was in this kind of mood. So uh, I'm probably going to read this in maybe a day and then get the movie out from my library. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of kind of summary books that I'm really looking forward to. Um, the first is An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. This is just, this is an about time sort of situation. Um, I really need to go ahead and rate this because of how long I've owned it. Um, and there is a road trip in this one, so it's definitely a summer read in my opinion. Um, same with Paper Towns, which I actually accidentally left upstairs, so I don't have that to show you, but I definitely want to read that after, um, An Abundance of Catherines. And I think that that's probably going to be my favorite of the um, John Green books that I've read so far. Uh, and again, road trip, summertime, so definitely appropriate. Uh, and then I have Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. Summertime, road trip, 
teenage romance, definitely the right time to read this. Uh, Isla and Happily Ever After, which is the third um, Stephanie Perkins book. Um, and what I've done with this is I keep reading, um, rereading Anna and the French Kiss and The Little Boy Next Door before I try to read this one. Um, and then for some reason this one doesn't happen. So I really need to just sit down and read this because I remember enough of the other two having reread them, having read each like maybe three times to just dive into this on its own. Um, and then we have What I Thought Was True by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Um, and I got this when it first came out, still haven't read it, uh, but I read uh, My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick and I freaking loved it. So I'm very excited to read this one. And can I just say how beautiful I think this cover is? It's so purple and purple is my third favorite color. So I really, really love this. I just think it's beautiful. Um, and also I really want to read uh, The Boy Most Likely To, which is another Huntley Fitzpatrick. Not necessarily right now, but at some point I want to read that because that's actually a sort of sequel companion novel to uh, My Life Next Door. So yeah, anyway, looking forward to this one. Um, okay, now I think I'm going to end that here and go to part two to talk about the other books that I really want to read. Um, so let me know what you think of any of the books that I've mentioned here in part one, uh, and stay tuned for part two, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.